we're back in the garage. So, A, it must be spring, and B, we're back with another Wheeler Dealers. You've all been moaning at me, so I'm back. And this one's a bit special, because if you've been with us since the beginning, you would have remembered I said something like this. Hopefully, we're going to find a car that's still on the road, and you never know, we might even find the owner. And I said it possibly slightly optimistically, but hey, we've not found one owner, we've found two. So, in this episode, we're going to catch up with what happened with the LPG V8 Yellow Land Rover. And also, new to the channel, is the first car from Series 6, which was a 1980 Triumph Spitfire. Now, you might notice one thing about the garages. I'm not so encroached with motorcycles like I used to be. I had a bit of a clear out over the winter. And if you're interested, we'll put a link at the end. But we did this great video for the first time I actually sold a bike at auction. So back to the Land Rover. The last we saw of it was back in 2016 when the MOT had run out. And I didn't find really anything on it after that until there was this um, comment by Labco who said, well, you've looked everywhere, but you didn't look in my front garden. Well, we had to get in touch. And Labco, who is in fact Dave, uh, said he'd owned the um, Land Rover for nine years, which is correct because... The last change of V5 we got for it was 2015, so we spoke around the turn of the year, so that all ties in quite nicely. And interestingly, this car has had quite a few modifications since we saw it on the show. Now here's a picture of when Dave acquired the vehicle, and he's given it a nickname. And you won't be surprised that it's called The Lemon. Now it's been some seven years since the car had been on the show, so there have been a few changes. The LPG kit and roll bar were still present, but just look at this list of modifications that's also happened to it. So in that seven years, it's had parabolic leaf springs, it's had an overdrive fitted, it's had the power-assisted steering from a Defender, it's had a, a side hinge rear tailgate, and it's also had some rear seats and a rear step fitted. So it's had quite a lot of work done to it. Dave tells me he acquired this through a dealer in Southampton. Now, if you remember, I had the belief it had been through some kind of dealer or trader's hands because it had changed hands in a very short period of time. So I was right on that one. And he, when he got it back home, discovered there was an awful lot of uh, mud on the underside of the vehicle and in the bell housing and so on. And it gives the impression he believes it was used for something like uh, fishing or for like launching a boat, something of that uh, ilk. It's been off the road since the MOT expired in 2016, but Dave has decided he's getting onto it this summer and trying to get it back on the road. He says it's a usual story of, of other projects, and he says advancing years, and he says that's not just the car, it's him as well. But he's, he's decided to get stuck into it, and he's promised to come back to us and give us an update when he's made some progress. So that's great to hear. So the, the yellow Land Rover, now called the Lemon, He's alive and well, and hopefully going to come back in the near future. Now on to the first car of Series 6, and that was a Triumph Spitfire. Now this was a 1980 model, so this makes it one of the very last off the production line. It was the 1500cc, and Mike did exactly what he'd done with the Master MX-5, and bought this car in the depths of winter, and paid just £2,400 for it. Once back to the workshop, the main job that Ed did on this car was to convert the cylinder head to make it suitable for unleaded petrol and obviously more modern motoring. He also uh, replaced the differential, he changed the rear shock absorbers, and he also had some of the bright work re -chromed. So how did the numbers work out on this one? Well, as I mentioned, Mike paid 2400 for it. The costs were 1032 So that gave a total of £3,432. When they came to sell it, they sold it for £4,600, and that left them with a profit of £1,168. So fast forwarding to 2024 on value, and doing my usual benchmark of Practical Classics Magazine Condition 1, and interestingly, it's just £5,500. So compared to the £4,600, they've only gone up in value £900 over, what, 15 years? But let's be honest, the Spitfire was a fairly mature classic at the time of the recording of the original programme. 
So what's happened to this car post-show? Well, if I go to my usual first stops, we've got DVLA. Not listed. My car check. Not listed. Hmm. Bit of an internet search. Um, a few odd screenshots on things like uh, ICMDB and so on, but really not much out there. I was absolutely stumped. And then there was this comment with Dennis who mentioned, I own this car. I thought, I need to know more. So we got in touch with Dennis and we've had a great chat. The reason we couldn't find the car on DVLA or Mine Car Check is that Dennis has actually put his own plate on it. But it is period correct. It's, it's not dissimilar to the original plate. But he has asked us not to share it, so we obviously respect that. But the great thing is, now that we've got that registration number, we can do some investigation and find out what that car has been up to until Dennis owned it after the show. With this episode first being aired in May 2009, I would imagine that the car was worked on in the earlier part of the year. And interestingly, the car did have a valued MOT from the, probably the point they purchased it to the point they moved it on. Now, if we look back at the next MOT, it wasn't until 2010. And there was actually quite a number of advisories on this one, but it did pass. But then the next MOT wasn't until 2019, where, as you can see, it failed quite badly and wasn't actually represented for a retest. There was then another MOT in 2020, where it initially failed, but was repaired and passed. And interestingly, it's only done 100 miles since the first post-show MOT in 2010. And of course, now the car is uh, MOT exempt, and 2020 is the point where Dennis comes into the story owning the Spitfire. Dennis actually had a close family connection with the Canley factory in Coventry where these cars were built. His father actually worked there in the past, and when they watched the programme of the Spitfire being done on Wheeler Dealers, this obviously brought back memories for his father. After his father sadly passed away, Dennis still had a hankering to own the Triumph Spitfire that he'd seen on the TV programme. And amazingly, in October 2020, he saw it for sale on Facebook Marketplace down in London. So he scampered down quickly from Coventry to try and put a deal together. It turned out the car hadn't been sold to the person, as we'd seen on the TV programme. Yes, we know, Og News, it's TV. But in fact, it had actually been raffled off as a prize to the production crew. Now, the person that won it was actually the person who was selling it in 2020. And apart from using it for a couple of camping trips, which I guess was back in around about 2010, the car had hardly been used and just been sat in the garage. Dennis still admit to me that he had actually more or less bought the car before he'd seen it. And, but despite the fact he, he played a bit of a poker game, did a bit of haggling with the seller, and before long, he was the new owner of the car. Now, not having been driven for a few years, on the trip back to Coventry, it was a bit of a cough and a spluttery from the engine department, but he made it home safely. Once he had the car back home, Dennis really got into doing some work on the car and smartening it up. But there was a bit of a surprise in store. When he removed the transmission tunnel, it turned out there was a rat's nest under there. Uh, but thankfully, the rats, rat had already vacated the nest. The car was in the desperate need for a respray. And on stripping the car down, Dennis discovered the cross member was painted yellow. And on further investigation, when he acquired a heritage certificate for the car, he discovered that was of the original colour for the car. So it wasn't green, it was originally yellow. And the car had first been registered in Kent. Dennis treated the car to a complete engine rebuild, fitted a new fuel tank, an upgraded radiator, and also electronic ignition. And that's how the really sensible package of upgrades to make the car fit in better with modern motoring. To try and get the car running better, Dennis invested somewhere around about £900 in a set of Italian carburettors. But unfortunately, despite the best efforts of himself and also professionals, he wasn't able to get them running right, so eventually went back to the standard carburettor setup. Dennis describes the car as a keeper, and with the obvious connection to his late father, and also the amount that he's invested in it, I'm not surprised. His plan for this year is to start taking it to some local shows, car meets, and have general days out with it. 
I think it's really great to see that this car has found a really great home with Dennis. I can't imagine anyone else would be looking after it better. So this one definitely has a happy ending. If you've re enjoyed that story, and I hope you have, if you consider giving that subscribe button a click, that'd be great. It's free. And also, if you're interested in watching that video of me selling a bike at auction for the first time, that's there. And finally, to all of those that moaned in the comments that I never actually find cars until next time